Welcome to Electron Line. So far, we've been able to figure out how to calculate the transfer coefficient for force convection, H. H was dependent upon the heat conductivity of the, of the fluid, the characteristic length of the object, and the Nusselt number, and the Nusselt number was defined by this equation. Inside the equation, we see the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number. And so far, for the Prandtl number, we said we could just grab it off of a table if we know the conditions, the temperature, and the type of fluid, and so forth. But we can actually calculate the Prandtl number, and that's what we're going to do here. So the Prandtl number is defined as the product of the viscosity times the specific heat of the material under constant pressure divided by the heat conductivity of the fluid. And so here from a previous video, we noticed that the viscosity for air at room temperature was equal to this, and that the conductivity for, the, for air is equal to 0 0.026 joules per second or watts per meter per Kelvin. And we've obtained that before, but now let's concentrate on how to calculate the primal number. So to do that, we need to calculate the specific heat for air, and air is primarily made out of nitrogen and oxygen, which is a diatomic molecule, which means that C sub P is 7 halves the gas constant, and the gas constant is 8.315 joules per mole times Kelvin. Now we have to convert that to per kilogram. So the ratio is that one mole has a mass of 0 0.029 kilograms on average between nitrogen and oxygen, and so if we then multiply the specific heat, we end up with 1,004 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Now, when we put all that together, we can calculate the Prandtl number. So the Prandtl number is equal to the viscosity, which is equal to 1.785 times 10 to the minus 5 pascals per second. That would be newtons per meter squared times seconds. We're going to multiply that times the specific heat, which is 1,004 joules per kilogram times Kelvin. And then we divide that by K, which is 0 0.026 joules per second, which is watts per meter times Kelvin. Now notice that a Newton can be written as a kilogram meter per second squared, and notice when we multiply all that out, the units should completely cancel. So let's see if they, they do. We have one second and a second square. We have a second in the denominator and a second in the numerator here, so that cancels out. We have a joule and a joule, those cancel out. We have a kilogram and a kilogram, that cancels out. A meter and a meter squared, this meter and that meter cancels out. And then finally, we have a K and a K. Those cancel out. And notice, all the units cancel out. We simply end up with a single number with no, no units, which is characteristic of both the Reynolds and the Prandtl number. They are unitless. And so we get 1.785 e to the 5 minus times 1,004 divided by 0 0.026 equals. And I get 0 0.689. So the Prandtl number is equal to 0 0.689 and that is the value that is acceptable since it's bigger than 0 0.6 we then put it in here raised to the one-third power which is what we saw in the previous videos but now we know that yes you can indeed calculate the Prandtl number if you know the viscosity of the fluid you know the specific heat of the fluid and the conductivity constant of the fluid and that is how it's done